You know, I did have a topic for this week, but I tried to record it twice and it sucked both times. So this week instead, I'm going to tell my most embarrassing ski story here on the Ski Rex Media Podcast. everyone it is once again tim from ski rex media who did have a topic other than the one we're going to talk about the one i'm going to talk about today i had a whole topic ready to go and it my my two attempts at recording it sucked out loud and i know one should never be their own critic because i like most people am my own worst critic but it was garbage but i can say that during a uh twitter conversation the good folks said i made an offhanded comment on twitter about uh, my most embarrassing ski story being at Killington and whoever was running Killington's social media that day said, we're intrigued, maybe a podcast episode. And I was like, you know what? Maybe you're right. Your wish is my command. So I'm going to tell that story. Now let's start with the idea that embarrassment is relative. Everybody gets embarrassed by something different. For some people, it's very easy. For other people, it's very difficult. And I'm typically one of the ones who's very difficult. You got to go out of your way to embarrass me. In fact, most people would have to probably risk embarrassing themselves to embarrass me. You'd have to take yourself down to take me down with you. Um, So this in particular, my embarrassing point here was maybe because it was a blow to my young male ego. Um, Maybe it was just a blow to my ski ego. Um, It was mostly, I think anybody could be embarrassed by this one, but let, let, let me get into this story. Um, this was many, many years ago. Um, some buddies of mine and I were up at Killington for the day, mid-season, maybe January, and we were all over the place. We parked at Ram's Head that day, um, then we were all over the place, you know, as best as we could be, and at some point, we ended up on the Snowden Palma, and I think that's what it was called. That's how long ago it was, because I don't think that lift is there anymore. I haven't skied Killington an awful long time. Um, but I have been there as a spectator, you know, a couple times now for the races in November. And I, uh, I remember we were at this Poma lift and I think that's the one it was. And like I said, I don't think it's there anymore, but we, we, we get in the line, which was fine because we were having a good day and I was a decent skier. So getting to a lift line wasn't a problem. Getting on a chair wasn't a problem. Getting in a gondola isn't a problem. Rope toes, not a problem. I, I was good. Not pro by any means. Like don't 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 ever let me make you think that Tim from Ski Rex Media was just the greatest, the god of the mountain. I wasn't, but I was good enough to get by. I can handle the terrain of all the mountains. You know, I I was up to double black. I could ski bumps if I had to. I never really liked to, but I could ski trees and and steeps and ice and rain and what have you. You name it, I could do it. Um, you know, just everything but the park. I've I've just never been good at doing tricks. And that's been, you know, the case on everything, bikes, skateboards, inline skates, you name it, I can't do tricks. Um, so I was good. I was good enough to ski anything and I was good enough to ride pretty much every lift or so I thought. So me and my buddies, we, we go ahead and line ourselves up for this lift. We get in the line. And we're, you know, bullshitting, having a good time, laughing, joking, you know, flirting with the girls, whatever, you know, what have you. And, you know, he comes up to our turn and lifties there. Very nice. In fact, I actually got into this story a little bit already in my ode to lifties. So if you want to hear it from about more about the lifty, you can go check that episode out. Um, if not, then you don't have to. But the lifty, very nice guy. Good kid. Um, couldn't tell you his name anymore. We didn't stay in contact, but, he, you know, he's a good guy. So we get in. I get, I get, up, to the, get up to the line. It's our turn. And my first friend, he, you know, he lines up. It's a Poma. You know, it's half, a, it's practically a T-bar. You know, if you, I mean, you should, I'm sure anybody who's watching this knows what a Poma lift is. Um, and you know what a T-bar is. And, and, the, and the idea, at least I think, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe even after all these years, I, that's why I biffed on it. It's the same principle. My buddy gets on, the bar comes, grabs the bar. Well, from the lifty, he grabs the bar, puts it on, up the hill, gone. My next friend comes up, lifty hands him the thing, gets it. Catches the line, off he goes. Now, for whatever reason, this thing threw me off. I don't know why. I can't tell you why to this day. 
But I, I, I grabbed a thing, put it between the legs. It catches, it pulls for whatever reason. I leaned back too far on it and I went down. <laughs> now, I was smart enough to let the bar go. Like you weren't going to catch, people weren't going to see me and say, look, Jerry's getting dragged up the hill. And you know, in hindsight, I probably should have done that because it might have been less embarrassing so i fell i fell right off this thing the bar keeps going now that's not really embarrassing falling once for some people it would be for me no for whatever reason i just went down no big deal lifty says hey you okay i says yeah whatever things happen come around get back into line it, and it wasn't a busy day so i was back on pretty quick i was back in line pretty quick it was a weekday you know, like i said we were off from mount snow we were obviously you know not working and well we were obviously not working because it wasn't a weekend if you work in the ski industry you work the weekends typically if you're a full-timer you work you're off during well i can't say typically because i don't know if that's true for everyone but it was true for us so we uh i get back in the line real quick uh and i i start to come up to the line Grabbed a bar, put it in, up a little bit, on the ground again. Not really embarrassing then, but starting to be. Because I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Why can't I do this? So, come back around the shack, get back into line. Now I'm kind of feeling a little nervous, a little self-conscious. And the thing is, I don't think anybody really noticed. Like I said, there really weren't a lot of people up there and anybody else in line was able to go up this lift. You know, like I said, typical surface lift. Um, everybody's done them. Almost everybody's done them. I can't say everybody, but most people have done them and uh, don't have an issue with them. It's a beginner lift, basically. You know, beginners learn how to do this. I wasn't a beginner at the time. I actually feel a little embarrassed now telling it because here comes the embarrassing part. Not once did I go down, not twice did I go down, but three times I went down. Now that's embarrassing enough because here I am in what felt like a long time laying face down and the third time I did end up face down and I have no idea how I did that and I'm laying there for a second and I, again the bar went, I never held on to it. I, I don't know how I ended up face down but I do know the lift. He said, hey man, you okay? And I was like, no. And I was pissed. I was angry. I was cussing angry. Like, dude, I don't know what the fuck is going on. I don't know what my problem is. I'm not like, it's not like it's my first day. I'm not a noob here. You know, I, I, I've done this before. I can do it, blah, blah, blah. I was so pissed and I was cussing and I was mad. And I wasn't taking it out on the kid. Like he knew that, but with a lifty, I don't know if he was a kid or not, but you know, I, I wasn't taking it out on him and he knew that. And I was red faced, not from the cold. I feel like I'm getting red faced now. I feel flushed. And uh, so I swing down. And at that time, I was a cigarette smoker. So I started sucking down a cigarette, just mad, frustrated, embarrassed, because I felt like people were looking at me now more than anything because I was a little bit louder vocally and I was cussing up a storm. Fuck, 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 fuck. You know, you know the deal. And I'm sitting there smoking mad. And again, I don't think that anybody even noticed or cared because there wasn't that many people there and everybody else was doing just fine, which was also embarrassing to me because it's like, why, if they can't, why can't I? So it wasn't as bad then. It was pretty bad. Like I was red faced. I didn't want anybody to look at me. You know, I, I don't even think I was facing the lift line. I was facing away from the lift line. Um, but my two friends finally come down to see what had happened to me because this is a good 10 or 15 minutes. They've now been up at the top waiting for me at least 10 or 15 minutes. So they come down. I see them come down. They see me sucking on a cigarette. They say, Hey man, what happened to you? Are you all right? I said, no fucking pissed. And they say, why are you pissed? I was like, cause I just couldn't do this three times. I fell on my ass and well, twice on my ass, once on my face. Now, if you know the mountain, you know that, you know, where that lift was. If that lift was about here, Ram's Head's over there, you know, and you come around. And if you come around a circle, if you look at a trail map, you can see as you come up around, then the main base and 
where you know superstar is at the bottom and then you come down and then there's the access road that goes down the killington grands down here and then you follow the access road all the way back down to route four so this circle here if we're here and the killington grand is over here I'm pretty sure they heard my friends laughing at me that day. <laughs> now, echoes do carry in Vermont, but there's trees and stuff. They were loud. They laughed loud and they made fun of me. They made fun of me bad because they knew. I knew. They know. They knew at the time that I knew how to ski. These guys have been skiing with me. They knew I could follow them. And a couple of them were there um, when I was going through my, um, my re... Um, where I was relearning how to do it. I, I was off for a few years between ages uh, 12 to like 15. Um, so for those three years, I didn't do it. At that point, I thought skiing was a rich man's sport. And I wasn't rich, so I was I couldn't do it. And I didn't realize there were ways to make it cheaper. And one of those ways was when I came of age to get a job. And then I was skiing all the time um, and, and learned to love it. So they, they were there helping me relearn how to ski, which is why I was out there with them that day. And... Like I said, at that point, I could ski just about anything, and now they're laughing at me because I can't do the damn Boma lift. And it was I feel embarrassed now. I'm having trouble looking at the camera, and you are you all, you're watching me, but you're not looking at me, if you understand my meaning. So that was, that was pretty brutal for me, that they laughed so loud to other people here. And I saw the lift, he started to chuckle too. I gave him a cigarette, and he still started to chuckle at me. So I get it. It wasn't completely malicious that they were laughing. They were laughing because I guess it is kind of funny that, you know, because we all biff from time to time. Um, even the most practiced skier will fall. Practice snowboarder will fall. I've never had a problem with falling. It's when I fell three times doing something that I should have been able to do in one turn. And if I had only fallen once, I wouldn't have thought twice. But because I fell three times in a row in front of people. And the more I think about it, that's when it embarrassed me. Like I said, people might not have noticed because they were going up and up and up. So I don't know if I'll ever do one again because that's how bad it bothered me, even though I know I can do it. I know I can do it. I, I know it. I have no doubt in my mind. But the fact that I could go down again, I could do it at my age. Um, like I said, not being new and being skilled enough. And if I did, if I did it again, I, I don't know what I would do. And I, I'd like to think that I could play it off. You know, I say embrace the fall because I've had some pretty good biffs that I think are great. But this one, because it was, it wasn't just some fluke. It was just some, it wasn't just some random dumb thing. It was, I couldn't do it. And I tried to do it three times and it was just, just a horrible experience for me and I don't know why I don't know why so bad why that bothers me so bad because anybody else was like oh, I fell three times fuck it whatever um and I kind of try and think like that now but I, I I really can't I uh I don't like it I will try one again at some point I'm sure I'm gonna have to at some point but man I I'm gonna ask everybody in line to close their eyes just in case I screw it up. So there you go. That's my most most embarrassing story, and I hope I, get, I, I the embarrassment came across because it it is kind of a. I, I hope it wasn't too much of a letdown because it is a very simple story um, that I just couldn't handle a lift, and it just happened to be at Killington Mountain, which is still remains one of my favorite mountains. Um, definitely top three. You know, Mount Snow. Killington and, and Camelback in, in Pennsylvania, small um, mountain in the Poconos. Um, you know, these are my three favorite mountains for different reasons. And um, I, I, one of my favorite mountains has one of my greatest biffs. And that biff is really, really embarrassing. So I hope the story wasn't a letdown. I hope, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I told it well. I hope I was able to convey how embarrassed I was. Um, but I hope you enjoyed listening to it or watching me tell it. Um, if you did like the video, please, and share the video and audio version, please. And you can comment all you want to. You can comment in the comments below. You can email me. You can go to social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and comment there. Or contact Ski Rex Media through any of those. All that information is in the description. You can go down and look at that. You can also see it in, um, if you listen to it on, say, Buzzsprout, you can go to Spotify or iHeartRadio, Google Podcast. You can get it there as well. And obviously the YouTube channel, the weekly main podcast, and then the minicast videos, and my weekly what's 
going on this weekend. Are you skiing in Vermont this weekend video? So you can check those out as well. Uh, I thank you for listening. I, I thank you for watching. Um, and I am going to go hide my face because I feel like I'm a little flush telling that story because it is indeed embarrassing. All right. So you have a good week. Um, this went out on Wednesday morning. So if you're watching it on Wednesday, enjoy the rest of your week or enjoy whatever time of day or whatever part of the week it is. I am Tim from Ski Rex Media. And as soon as I can, I will see you out there. Hopefully at Killington, I will see you out there and we'll tackle some lifts together. All right. Laters. Laters.